there are very rigorous rules when writing out resonance structures and what we can have for resonance structures. So first, two or more resonance structures differ only in placement of pi electrons and non-bonding electrons, or lone pair electrons. Non-bonding and lone pair we use interchangeably. You cannot move any atoms, you cannot move sigma bonds, and you must obey normal valency rules. So for example, carbon can't have more than an octet of electrons. So we're going to look at some different resonance systems. And as we do, and as we draw resonance structures, now I'm going to continually point out how we're following all of these rules and we're not violating any of them. We're going to go through and look at some different resonance patterns. We're going to start with allylic carbocations. And as we do this, we're going to see that there's really two main categories, three atom systems and two atom systems. And in this case, we have a three atom system. And what I mean by that is the movement of electrons or the delocalization of electrons we're looking at is going to be involved within three atoms. So the allylic carbocation is really the one we just looked at in the previous example. We have this. Now, we're going to be working with curved arrows to show electron flow this semester. And this is something we're really going to develop over um, the various lectures in the course. So what I want you to keep in mind for now is that if we draw a curved arrow on a molecule, curved arrows show electron flow. And you can think of that as they depict where electrons are going. So if we come back to our allylic carbocation here, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the pi bond in blue again. That's our source of electrons. So when we move electrons in resonance systems, we're going to be moving pi bonds and lone pairs. Sometimes that movement results in the movement of a charge, but we're not really showing charge movement. So what we can think about, think about this pi bond almost like being on a hinge. So here's our hinge. This is a swinging door. Here's the open door. If this door swings over here, it closes, but it leaves an opening right here. That's basically what we're showing here. I'm going to take this pi bond, swing it on the hinge, move it over here, so we get the pi bond on the right. Now, let me go ahead and draw in some hydrogen, too. We have a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, here, and here. Those were all implied hydrogens. When we draw the other resonance structure, remember we can't move sigma bonds. So these bonds in black are the same. The hydrogen and gray, those do not change. We can move lone pairs and pi bonds. Well, I moved the pi bond and swung it over here. Well, now this carbon has its octet, it's happy. But I took electrons out of this carbon. So now this carbon has a void, and the positive charge goes there. So what this curved arrow here is depicting is that we're removing electrons from the carbon on the left, and then we add electrons to the carbon on the right. Remember that the positive charge is electron deficient. It's kind of like a hole in the molecule that wants electrons, so it can accept these electrons we're moving towards it. And by taking away electrons from this carbon, 
that left the void for the positive charge to go here. So we didn't really move the positive charge, we moved electrons and that resulted in the charge changing positions. Let's look at this in a slightly larger molecule and show that it's still really the same thing. Here we have this molecule, but we still have a positive charge next to a double bond. That's an allylic carbocation. And we can really distill this down to the simple three atom system here. I've circled three atoms. That's really all that's involved, just like we have in the above example. So what I'm going to do, start at the pi bond, move those pi electrons up here, and that adds them to this carbon, filling that hole, but leaving a hole down here. So now I'm going to redraw all of my sigma bonds. There's absolutely no movement in sigma bonds. Here's the three carbons that I circled what we're working with. The pi bond moves here. And then because we took electrons away from this carbon, the positive charge ends up there.